This morning we'll look at Luke chapter 15 verses 1 to 10 as we see the parables of Jesus and the lost sheep and the lost coin. Jesus comes to seek and to save the lost and when he finds us he brings us home to forgive us and to love us because love speaks passionately. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours today from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for the lesson today, Love Speaks Passionately, is from Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 10, where we read, Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear him. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you the truth, that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who do not need to repent. Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Does she not light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. So far the text. I don't know if you're like me, but I like to occasionally see how many jingles I can recall. Commercials from years ago. I imagine you can probably recognize this line. What would you do for a Klondike bar, right? That has been around for decades, hasn't it? And I remember originally they would and they still do ask people, what would you do for a Klondike bar? And in order to show the value of their ice cream, they would have outlandish things. Would you kiss a polar bear for a Klondike bar? Or do you remember, would you hold this gigantic snake for a Klondike bar? Or more recently, perhaps, to a husband, would you listen to your wife and not watch the big game for a Klondike bar? That's a tough one. Or another tough one, to a wife. Would you go with your husband to an action movie for a Klondike bar? Of course, the answer is always yes. That Klondike bar is so valuable that they would do anything to possess it, right? There's an old game show from years ago as well, kind of a similar theme. Anything for money. Maybe you remember that one. Anything for money. They'd go out on the street with a microphone and they'd stop somebody and they would say, for example, would you let this woman slap you in the face for $25? No. Would you let her slap you in the face for $50? And the price would go up to a certain level and they would see if someone for a certain amount of money would allow something to happen. Anything for money. The value, of course, that we're talking about with Klondike bars and with the old game show is really this question. What is it worth to you? What is it worth to you? Now, this morning in the lesson, we see some things that have really no intrinsic value of themselves. Jesus uses these as teaching points. Sheep and coins, right? Jesus was teaching. Jesus was teaching sinners. And it didn't escape the fact amongst the Pharisees and teachers of the law that he was associating and socializing with these people. He was sitting down to actually eat meals with these people. He was in their homes defiling himself because he was teaching the Word of God and they were gathering around to hear him. Now the Pharisees, when they say he's eating with sinners, obviously think, what's the value of a sinner? Not very much. Not very much at all. 
And perhaps we fall into the same sort of a trap as well. What is the value of that drug addict down the street who lives in a hovel and begs for cash? What is the value of a woman who's being abused or a man who's being abused? And what is the value of the abuser? Do you associate with the degenerates in this world or do you not? What is their value to you? Well, the Pharisees didn't value these people at all. They were outcasts from society. They didn't understand it from God's perspective that although they are not worth a great deal, neither were the Pharisees and teachers of the law, and neither are you and I, because we have no value at all. Our value is to be a poor, miserable sinner. We value ourselves greatly. In fact, we value ourselves over other people many times. But from God's perspective, we are rebellious. We have fallen away. We are sinners. So Jesus teaches a story. And the story he's going to teach is this. All those sinners, including everyone, Pharisees and the, uh, the sinners in the story, tax collectors and such, have no intrinsic value. God values them greatly. He does that by teaching uh, two parables in this case. One about a shepherd and sheep. Now, the shepherd has a flock of a hundred sheep. Pretty nice little group of sheep. Pretty well-to-do shepherd. Now, one of the sheep goes missing. We all know the story. The shepherd, for some reason, leaves the 99 and goes after the one. Not because it has any value apart from the fact that the shepherd has attached value to it. Now, we could criticize that lost sheep. We could say, well, why weren't you paying attention? Why weren't you watching when the shepherd led the, sh the flock elsewhere and you were simply wandering off? But it's so easy in this world to get lost, isn't it? It's so very easy to lose our way. I don't think that sheep intended to become lost. I think that sheep began searching around to see what was interesting in the field and began to focus on something. And the focus was so intent that when the shepherd and the flock went on their way, the poor thing was left behind. He was so focused on what was in front of him or her that everything else just disappeared. Well, once he's lost, what do you do? Well, you begin to search. This sheep begins to look around, begins to wander off begins to become more and more separated from the flock. And what's the danger out there but circling wolves? Wolves that want to separate the sheep from the flock. Wolves that want to separate the sheep from the shepherd. That circle that sheep. And the shepherd knows the danger that that sheep is in. So what does he do? He leaves everything of value to him. He sets it aside and he comes looking for the sheep. Now the sinner that lays on the Lord's heart, it can be said, is far more heavy than when he picks it up and lays it on his shoulders. The Lord has a heart, a compassion, a passion for the lost. And he came from his glory in heaven to this world, became one of us, that he might go find his lost sheep, which had been separated from his flock by the wolves, by sin, by death, by Satan, by the world. He came to find you and me. The same is true of the lost coin. Now, it might be in our minds that we could say, well, I don't really get it, like the Pharisees didn't, because I'm not lost. 
and I know God cares about all those other people, but at least I'm here. It's about me, which probably wouldn't be the right thing. Or we could say, yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's on my heart day and night. I'm always concerned. I'm always praying. I'm always thinking about the lost. And I do everything I can to go save them. What would you do for a sinner? Right? But I think what actually takes place is the answer is not no. The answer is not yes. The answer is sometimes Sometimes I'm much more aware and concerned than other times about other people that have not yet heard the word of Christ. But there's a thing in the parables that tie them together, and this thing is rejoicing. Because God in his mercy and love goes to seek and to save the lost. And when he finds that sheep, when he finds that coin in which he has placed so much value, what does he do? In either case, gathers his friends around him and rejoices. He celebrates with a party. He says to his neighbors, rejoice with me, the sheep that is lost was lost is found. The coin that was lost is found. And the celebration goes on and the application is there is so much rejoicing in heaven. Even with the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And over 99 that need no repentance. His emphasis is you and I and everyone else is valued by our good and gentle shepherd. And our dear and gracious Lord has set aside everything to come to this world. He has set aside everything to become one of us. And what has he done for us? We know already. We heard it already in the Old Testament, the Gospel lessons. He allowed himself to be lifted up on a cross. He endured a life of hardship and temptation for you and me. He died a brutal death for you and me. And on his shoulders, the sins of the world, your sins and mine, were laid. And that tremendous weight that he carried to the cross that was laid upon his heart, now upon his shoulders, was much lighter when he said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. And how often have you and I been exactly that oblivious, not knowing what we do. And yet God in his love has put the price of his son's blood above all else to purchase you back. That you can be his own. That you might live in his kingdom. He has died on a cross. He has risen from the grave. He has ascended to the right hand of power. And there he rules his church. And all of this he does simply for you. For you. Because that's how much he loves the unlovable me. That's how much he values the valueless me. And through the gift of faith, it is God working in our hearts that brings us back to Him. And so this morning, you and I are the ones at this point who have been found. God has called you and I to be in His kingdom, to celebrate with Him over those who repent and turn to Him. And you know what? Sometimes that's you and me again and again, day by day, as we fall into temptation and the word of Christ draws us back and we say, God, forgive me, a sinner. And it's also God using you, the forgiven child of God, no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, sins washed away clean, to go out on his behalf and call those who have become lost as well. That by sharing his word of saving love, 
you become his emissary to embrace the loveless, to touch the heart of the sinful, to bring the word of reconciliation and life, that they too may be returned to the fold, that they too might be the reason for rejoicing, that they too may be a reclaimed child of God through the working of the word as you share it with others. The question we started out with this morning is, what would you do for a Klondike bar? This morning we'll use that same question and ask ourselves as we conclude, what would you do for a sinner? What would you do for a sinner like me? What would you do for a sinner like you? You are the light that Christ has placed in this world. In this Lenten season, hear his cross speaking love passionately. And not only hear that passion being proclaimed to you from the cross, but responding in love. May God enable you to speak that word of life with passion that the lost might be found and the kingdom of God and the holy angels might rejoice. For you and I are the reason for that joy. In Jesus' name, amen. If you'd like to hear more on this or any other topic, please find us on the web at emmanuelnrh.net. Please join us for worship Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., Bible class and Sunday school at 10.30 a.m.